Welcome to Living on the Ocean, our sixth episode of Sailing in World Lockdown Time. Hota Azores, a safe haven, and what a beautiful sunrise it was this morning. We arrived here last night, but it would have been dark to go into the harbor, so we let the boat drift and enjoy the fantastic sunset, with the bonus of this fantastic, beautiful sunrise this morning. Now having a bit of wind on the nose, we have to tack between Pico and Fayal. Pico on the starboard side, a 2300 high volcano coming out of the bottom of the ocean, which is 2000 meter deep here. And that makes Pico Portugal's highest mountain. On the left hand side is Fayal. Fayal with its famous port Horta, where over the last centuries boats have found refuge. I came here myself in 2016 when I was sailing solo, but now together with Cheryl, the first time that she sees the Azores, we know we have to go in quarantine again, but we are happy that we made it again across an ocean. It was not an easy trip, but we had no idea what was going to happen in the Azores, what was going to happen in Horta and how special it would be in 2020. Sailing my boat as good as possible upwind without daggerboards. Already busy for days designing in my head where to put the centerboards. In the side floats, in the main hull, two in the main hull on each side, asymmetrical ones, or just sketched underneath the side float. Just busy thinking how we get more upwind performance. We're now able to tack over 60 degree angles on the past which is not so much, but without center boards and nothing that can break or go wrong, that's not bad at all. Hey, Sailo girl, steering us next to Orta. Steering us nicely upwind. Upwind, yeah. The wind has picked up between the islands and we can see Horta as we do the last couple of miles of this fantastic trip. We left Portugal, went to the Canaries, then sailed all the way to St. Martha and back up and struggled on the ocean and we made what we think the pattern of a bird. And then we made it into the marina. It was too busy to film at the entrance and we got a message that the harbour was full and that we had to stay outside. Crossing an ocean and hearing that you cannot come in because so many yachts are in. We actually only supposed to stay for a couple days. But everybody, where shall they go? So everybody stays longer. People from the marina have to come out in a rip and guide us to a place where we can drop an anchor. It's amazingly well organized. The police mar team shows up with A4 sheets with all kinds of information of shops and phone numbers. We have to stay on board. We're not allowed to disembark the boat and the dinghy is not allowed to be put in the water. But food is no problem. Peter Sports Cafe has set up a WhatsApp system where we can say what we want and they will go to the shops for us and they spend from very early in the morning till after midnight going from boat to boat, taking orders, bringing food, bringing shopping. It's been said that they have 12 cars driving and over 16 people walking to the shops. Some person measured she was doing more than 12 kilometers. What they organized here completely amazed us, as you will see in the rest of this video. After spending something like 26 days on the ocean, of course we order from Peter's Sport Cafe fantastic warm food that they bring to the boat. And look at Cheryl's smiley face. And mine. We'll meet again. Now we're having a great time that first evening, enjoying the luxury of service. And then the shopping arrives. Yes, there's all our food ordered on WhatsApp. Just brought in. Brought in by crisps after so long. I hope the egg survived it. We will see it. Apples, chocolate. Chocolate. Wine. Wine. <laughs> all kind of things they brought us. Oh, but peanut butter. Peanut butter. Oh, <laughs> and what else did we got here? Ice cream. We got what? Ice cream! <laughs> we got ice cream! Instant here. eating! And we have no melting. fridge, so we must eat it, do we? We do! <laughs> Sorry, you've lost me. I'm eating ice cream. <laughs> Shell is out of words. Can't be more happy, then. 
but as an 8,000 mile sailing girl, she deserves a tub of ice cream. And I can have some bites. But then, I must admit, we have a bag full of chocolate cookies. And Cheryl with a gluten problem cannot eat chocolate cookies. The little mistake between Portuguese and English was that Cheryl wrote she wants cooking chocolate. And they probably thought that that was cookies chocolate. So instead of them bringing us cooking chocolate, pure cooking chocolate, they got us all kind of different cookies which I'm now obligated to get rid of. You understand my deep, deep... <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna suffer for that, am I? <laughs> yeah, oh dear. I suggested we gave them away, but Harry's gonna suffer for it and I just will, eat the cookies. I will suffer for it. <laughs> okay. And this is how we settled into our quarantine routine. We looked around us, looked at Pico brilliantly sticking out when there wasn't a cloud on top of it. We watched the sunrises and the sunsets and we looked at the boats around us. But mostly we listened 24-7 to the VHF radio on channel 10. Hearing all the boats coming in, hearing the same questions every time and get to know the voices of the other boats and the names of the other boats without knowing the people at all. We got to know the voices of the harbour master and all the people helping out. How they answered the same question over and over and how they stayed so polite and called everybody. Captain, can I help you? How may I help you? What can I do for you? Welcome to Horta. And we listened to the orders for Peter's Sport Cafe and every once in a while they came to us. What do they have for you? Chocolate. They have your chocolate, finally! <laughs> Thank you guys! So we got chocolates! That's chocolate. a happy Cheryl! Very happy me! Come on, big smile for you! <laughs> <laughs> that is delicious! That's right. Your first chocolate in how long? Must be two and a half weeks. Oh, that is gorgeous. Thank you. It wasn't always sunshine. And sometimes it was cloudy and it also rained. But then when it's raining and when it's cloudy, it gives fantastic sunsets to see the light reflecting like that on the clouds above Ayal and above Horta. Absolutely breathtaking. And then on the reasonable days there was something else to watch. The sailors of the future, in their small little optimists, tacking and sailing in between all those boats in the harbor. It was pleasant to watch. There was always something to see in Horta. And as the days kept on passing by, obvious people's patience started to run out, not being able to get off the boat and see this beautiful island, not even to be in your dinghy or swim. And certain people had complaints, and certain people said we can never have COVID-19, why can't we get off? And it was really amazing to us how professional and polite the marina staff was answering the questions every time, again and again and again. And then days all of a sudden would be changed with a happening that could have happened to many of us. Horns were blown in the marina by many ships as one of the boats, a solo sailor, had a broken mast. Ah, ah, 
the Tsar's Coast Guard had gone out to him and towed him all the way back to Horta. Engineers had gone on the boat and tried to help him with the engine. And if I'm correct, another sailor even sailed back to help him out. Everybody was happy he made it back. And for everybody, it was a reminder that we all should be so happy that we made it to this safe haven. And then on a nice day I got my painting stuff out and started painting. We did some great work today. We thought that it would be absolutely awesome to give a present to the people from Peter's Cafe since they did such an awesome job and still doing it to get everybody shopping. Bring it to all the boats. Bring it to all the boats and today we had to laugh so hard somebody got instead of two peppers they got 20 peppers <laughs> and in no time other people on the radio say we want to we want to and it almost became a, an auction about peppers and then people say oh they can have two of mine and they can have it was really funny anyway the people from peter's cafe they did such a good job i've been painting for them and i really want to give them something that people that know me better this is special to me a picture painted in a seashell from Horta in 2020 with a lot of masts and boats. I must say there's a lot of little houses in Horta. I hope we get the opportunity to, um, to go to Peter's Cafe. There's a small chance that on Monday we can do our uh, tests if we have COVID-19. And if those tests will be negative after 48 or 72 hours, then we are allowed on the shore. We can have a drink in Peter's Cafe. So here we are the next morning. We are called up to have our Corona swab test done. About 10 people can row or being brought with their boats to this quay. And with so many boats in the harbor and more than two people average on a boat, that's going to take quite a long time. And that's what people realized. And from that moment, one channel 10 wasn't enough. Marina Horta, Marina Horta, Marina Horta. This is boat X. Am I on the list for the Corona test? And every time there was a nice... I will check for you. No, sir, you're not on the list. Marina Horta, Marina Horta. This is boat B. Am I on the list? No, sir, you're not on the list. But why am I not on the list? I have a dog, I have a cat, I have kids. I was here longer than other people. Other people have gone first. People lost their patience. But the marina staff stayed so polite. Even on questions like, could you explain us how this thing is done? Could you explain us how the Portuguese do this? They stayed polite. They stayed so professional. Some of us sailors had run out of patience. And that wasn't always nice to hear. And for sure must not have been nice and easy for the marina that kept so incredible well in answering the same questions hour after hour, day after day and week after week. I have nothing else than the greatest compliments for the way Horta Marina, the staff there and Peter Sport Cafe and all the other people handled all our yachties in 2020 in the Corona lockdown. On our way to get the swap test done, we were allowed to get fuel and bring some of our rubbish away for the first time we walked on the key of Horta with all its paintings. And it was great to see it again. But it was also very strange to come to a fence that had a big sign on it that we could not go any farther. But knowing that there was not even one single case of COVID-19 known on the island, it was also to be understood that the people didn't want anybody with the smallest risk to come and spread it on this island that has a lot of elderly people on it as well. But the reality of standing in front of a gate that says that we cannot pass for our sailors that have been on the ocean for more weeks than we even could still have the virus. We already been in quarantine. We probably be the safest people. That was really unreal. But on the other side, it was also a great sign of them creating a possibility for us to come to the shore to bring our rubbish to get our water to come to this key and have repairs done by companies with people completely dressed in white suits and masks that would work on our boats from us yachties that came from the ocean a lot was organized for us but soon soon we were allowed to go to the shore after the testings 
which were freely given to us, which was another great gift from Horta Tortures Yaltis. It's the 16th of June and we are tested negative for Corona as expected. Yes, we can go to the shore, we can go check out the paintings, we can see if the painting that I made in 2016 is still to be found somewhere in between the thousands of paintings on this island. And we can walk to the beautiful streets and go to Peter's Cafe and meet a friend that I met here, Gil, in 2016 that was so nice to me then and had a fantastic barbecue with his wife for us. But first, we need to go to the Harbour Master's office. Uh, who's calling at the marina? This is Sailing Yacht X. Sailing Yacht X, go ahead. We've been tested for COVID. Are we tested negative? Can we have the results? That VHF was going non-stop. And yes, things could maybe have been organized in a different way. But at least they did organize something for us. And it was amazing to see them work there and how friendly they even did our paperwork on top of everything else. And now it's time to pick up Twilight to bring it to the key so that we can go and explore Horta. And with the last shot of the pontoon specially dedicated to boats in quarantine with people in white suits working on our boats, I want to end this part of the series. The episode has to be split. I have to make an extra one because too much happened on Horta. Next time we go to Peter's Sport Cafe, we go find my painting back and see lots of the beautiful sights in Horta. I hope to see you there again. Thanks for watching Living on the Ocean.